guys, I'm here with casting director Matthew Sefik today. Uh, Matt's a casting director from the Southeast, and he's casted for a lot of different things, including Army Wives, Mr. Mercedes, Queen of the South, and much more. And thank you for joining today. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, um, so I want to start, how long have you been in the business now? So I actually left graduate school probably about a month early uh, to take mm -hmm. my first job, and that was in 2005. Mm -hmm. So about 15 years, I've been doing casting for probably 12 to 13 of those years. Yeah, that's a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Um, what areas do you get most of your auditions from? Well, I mean, you know, being, so just quickly to kind of differentiate what I do from um, what say an LA casting director does mm -hmm. um, or, or somebody based in New York. So most of the leads uh, are coming from LA or New York mm -hmm. and that'll be handled by LA or New York casting. What okay. I, uh, specifically do is uh, what I call regional casting. So um, we're doing, you know, the guest star roles, the co-star roles, um, pulling, you know, from really all over the Southeast. So, so basically everywhere from Louisiana down to Florida, up to Virginia and really every place in between. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the largest pools of actors are probably in, clearly in Atlanta. Yeah, and the second market's probably actually Orlando, I would think. Um, really? The really yeah, well, they have the theme parks down there, so they can, uh, you know, they can have a day job that's acting and also do, you know, audition yeah. for film and television work. So yeah, I was, um, uh -huh. go ahead. I'm sorry. I was, saying, I was watching um, an interview you had the other day, and it was a lady from Orlando, I believe, and she was saying that you cast from there often too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, Lorna Quinn, Class Act Studios. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Um, so I watched some other interviews recently with casting directors and they said mm -hmm. sometimes, but not too often, that they find people from social media. Do you do that at all? I don't, but okay. that is happening more and more. Um, and there are projects that will specifically cast influencers. I did first yeah. one. The only one I've ever done was for a uh, YouTube Red movie. And um, yeah, they cast a lot of people based on their social media following. Um, I don't typically, because of the nature of the roles I'm casting, mm -hmm. um, I, it doesn't really pop up on my radar. It's, you know, resume and um, is, is much more important to me than, uh, than how many followers you've got. I was going to say, do people try to reach out to you all the time, though, and try it that way? Uh, I mean, I've got a casting Facebook page that yeah. I should pay more attention to. I, I sometimes log in and get back to messages, but um, uh, you know, what I do is so needs based in the sense that, you know, I've got a very specific, you know, person that I'm looking for based on an age range and an yeah. ethnicity and a description. So it really just all changes by project. So, you know, I occasionally will get, um, or you know, more than occasionally get headshots and resumes, stuff like that emailed yeah. to me. And that's, that's nice. But, you know, the way breakdown services and actors access works, it, you know, you have so much at your fingertips that mm -hmm. I really just, you know, work on what's in front of me for the most part. Awesome. Um, so I think everything pretty much now, especially with Corona, is being self-taped. Um, I think I was turning to that. When I moved to Atlanta, I noticed that most things are self-taped even. Uh, getting an agent, just doing auditions. Uh, is that the new norm? It's just self-taping. You know, how long have you been in Atlanta? Two years. Two years, okay. So when I started out like you know, 12 years ago, um, 15 years ago when I worked on, uh, when I was working in a different capacity, uh, you were watching auditions on DVDs if you were in kind of a remote yeah. location. Like, yeah, the first project I worked on shot in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Uh, I went to Washington. college. I went to college there. The, yeah, so they had, there was a movie shot in and around that area called Walker Payne. Okay. Um, very few people saw it, <laughs> but yeah. it, was a, it was a great first experience in the business. And um, uh, I can remember the director because I was assistant to the director. And one of my responsibilities was, you know, making sure he watched auditions. And uh, at that time, uh, I had to go out and get a DVD player because that's how we got auditions. But uh, mm -hmm. my point being is that I've kind of, when I started and where things are now, it's been a nice um, kind of time frame for me because I got to see the transition and, you know, it to go all digital. So, mm -hmm. um, and was working in it and kind of figuring out how that all worked as it was happening. So. Um, and one of the things that comes up a lot of times on this, um, 
about self-taping. And, and so the actors in the Southeast have been used to it for, for years now because projects shoot all over because of the different film incentives in, in various states. Mm -hmm. And so it's just kind of been our, it's been our normal for, you know, a decade probably, okay. or, you know, maybe not quite that long, but, um, but now we're getting to the point where, yeah, I think uh, when we come back, you already had um, more and more self tapes going on in LA and New York. And I think we're just going to see, uh, we're just going to see that because obviously this, you know, we're not returning to normal anytime soon if we if we ever do. Um, yeah. you know, it's a pretty life-changing event we're experiencing right now. Um, but yeah, I think it's just going to be too risky to get, you know, even if it's just 20 people to come cycle in and out yeah. of that, you know, 10 by 10 space or whatever space you're working in. So I think, I think, yeah, you're exactly right. There's, this is just, there's nothing, yeah. there's nothing. I was thinking about, about that the other day, even just with extras being on set, like all the people that are involved, it's going to be really hard from now on. Yeah. And I mean, I think you're going to see, they've released the guidelines. I haven't read through all of them. Um, they're pretty stringent. Yeah. Uh, and I think you'll see a, a reduction in background most likely and, yeah. and probably, unfortunately, maybe day players as well. So we'll, we'll yeah. just have to, we'll have to see what happens, I guess. It's, uh, you know, every day is, a, every day yeah. is, you know, the same but different. I don't know. It's getting, it's kind of blurring together. Yeah, we're always playing a waiting game. Seeing yeah, happening. exactly. Um, so with self tapes, uh, everyone has a basic rules of thumb. What is your basic rules of thumb for self tapes? Uh, I think the most important thing is to follow every casting director has different instructions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just make sure to pay attention to those instructions and follow them. Um, I think, you know, it's just some, some very basic ones. Technical quality is important. Um, it helps if your reader is an actor, um, mm -hmm. but you keep in mind, we need to hear the voice of the reader, but it's not the reader's audition. You know, we basically it, the focus needs to be entirely on you. I was, um, had an exchange recently, uh, a young woman sent me um, her uh, link to her reels to check mm -hmm. out her different clips and everything. And I said, you know, this is really good. Um, that her reader, uh, who happened to be her husband, had a very thick Southern accent. I was like, uh -huh. you probably need to get a different reader because uh -huh. you know somebody from New York or LA, they're gonna be listening to that and they're gonna think, oh my gosh, listen to that Southern accent, that's so that thick. Funny. All of a sudden, they're not thinking about what you're doing. And the whole point yeah. of it is to, the self tape is to to keep the focus on you. Make sure we can clearly see what's going on in your face, um, and then beyond that, there's a, you know a zillion uh, different little things that can, that can come up depending on you know what the character is, what the scene is. You know, obviously scenes that have involve some kind of action are typically more difficult uh, in self tapes, and it's always you know in in that situation I always say you know. You can't ignore the action, um, but whatever you do, make sure it doesn't look silly. So yeah. you know, come up with some way. Um, you know, I remember uh, there was a, a movie I did several years ago, and there, it was a choking scene. And so some of the actors, one of the most effective things they did was they, you know, used their own hand. You know, obviously it's out of frame to choke. You know, to act as if they were choking themselves, um, and played it that way. So, uh, you know, again, it's. Uh, it needs to come across as believable as possible and uh, and not silly. You know, if, yeah. if it looks silly to you, it's going to look silly to me. And I, you know, I am essentially, you know, not, not just the middleman, but I've got to pass whatever is submitted to me on to producers and directors. Yeah. And if it distracts me, it's going to distract them. I um, was actually on one of these Zoom calls a couple of weeks ago with, um, uh, a showrunner and um you know i asked him because i was excited because you don't often get to talk, talk to showrunners and yeah. uh i asked him because i've i've seen recently and i haven't been on set as much recently um but a, a couple of years ago i was watching and often uh directors and producers were watching auditions on their phone mm -hmm. and i asked him you know how often is that the way you're viewing these and he said you know I, I try to watch them in front of a computer but i know a lot of people are watching them on their phone so you think about you're submitting you know a yeah. video they're you know possibly on set or in the production office or wherever and they're watching it on their phone um it's just not an ideal environment to to watch yeah. an audition it's um, so small too on the phone Ugh. yeah and so <laughs> and also they've got so much going on that it's really got to hold what you're doing in that little space um yeah. you know in this space we're talking about right here uh has got to hold 
uh, my attention, attention and then it's got to hold their attention um and they've got less of it than i do because they've got a lot more going on they you know where i'm one department they're having to oversee 12 or whatever it is um so I can't even remember your question. <laughs> no, it, that was great. It was just pretty much your rules of thumb. Um, oh, yeah, 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 three. yeah. So it's, all, it's always different, and it varies from project to project. I mean, I, I have a standard list of guidelines that I, you know, suggest no props unless it's a phone call, or, you know, uh, obviously technical quality, and then it's just going to be dependent on what's in the, what's in the sides. Yeah. That's great advice. I love um, the advice on the reader too. Um, I've definitely had been guilty of having a roommate read and it was really bad. Um, yeah, so I've, seen, up. <laughs> you know, I've seen kids read with their, their parents yeah. and uh, it's just uh, like the reader's more nervous than the actor and you can hear it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, and it's, it's tough because you're, you're placed under, you know, very, um, tight timelines and you've got to turn around, you know, not only work on a performance, but also get together an audition and try and get a, you know, whether it's a taping service or I suggest, you know, if you can afford it, get yeah. a setup at home because that's going to, it's going to save you a ton of time in the long run. And I, you know, I know a lot of actors that um, almost uh, they, they have a, you know, they'll have a small group and um, you know, they'll help each other out. So, yeah. you know, they, they have their own taping setups. And then, you know, when one of them has an audition, one of the other in their network will help them out and, you know, go over and, you know, it's usually not a short, it's not like you're done in 10 minutes, you yeah. know, take 30, 45 minutes, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, use, uh, use whatever resources you can to, to make it easier on yourself because I, you know, ideally you're doing this a lot because mm -hmm. really an actor's, yeah. you know, an actor's job first is, is to be good at auditioning and, mm -hmm. um, hopefully you're auditioning a lot and yeah. uh, right now it's a little slow but it's a <laughs> yeah i'd say a lot slow yeah i am occasionally seeing people get auditions from time to time and i'm just thinking what who is working and where <laughs> I right mean, now, what are they, what are they right. shooting I, I uh i had a friend uh, that was on a uh, commercial recently and it's just mm -hmm. uh, i mean things are still happening but nothing on a large scale at yeah. least in this country yeah, I was gonna say I booked a commercial for Monday and I was super surprised just because everything it's getting worse in Atlanta. So I'm kind of on call pretty much. So like it might change, might not. Um, so that's what they're dealing with right now. Well, that's uh, cool. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, so I was gonna mention headshots. They're super important and it's what you look at on a daily basis probably. Do you usually typecast um, off that one image or do you do more digging around after you find a person? Well, and I may be uh uh, a little bit different as far as uh, what's most important about a headshot to me. <laughs> really, the most important thing to me is that it looks like you. I can't tell you how many directors I've yeah. heard, you know, it got to a point at one point um, where I was actually, so I would change the image that the directors see um, and use a frame grab from the audition tape rather than um, their headshot because so often I was hearing, wow, they look nothing like their headshot once the video starts and that just got old. <laughs> and so yeah. for me, it's the most important thing because I really, your headshot, all that matters to me is that it looks like you. Uh, yeah. So if you change your hair color, you change your headshot. If you, you know, uh, have options, if you vary your look, you know, and, or, or if you, you know, I think it's, it's helpful probably for actors when they have headshots that, you know, kind of work better for specific types so your agent has the ability to kind of, you know, switch between headshots that's associated with the video they're submitting. But really, um, you know, the, the, way I, the way I look at auditions, I um, uh, first I go through, say I get 100 auditions, mm -hmm. I'll do a pass. Um, so let's I guess start from the beginning. So when I go through headshots resumes before I've asked for the audition, um, I'll go through and just, if what I'm looking at is just the thumbnails of everybody. And so what I'll do is I'll select the actors that I know and that I know could do this. So that's my first pass. Then second, I go in and when you, you click on that thumbnail, then it takes you into screen that's the little thumbnail at the top, that's the headshot and the resume. And so anytime I'm looking at headshots, 99% of the time, it's going to be that small little thumbnail. It's, yeah. it's not very important to me. Um, and then the resume uh, obviously is something that, um, you know, for those actors I'm not familiar with mm -hmm. is something that I um, lean on. And, and usually I go to um, 
first television and you know television experience because yeah. I'm familiar with the shows that shoot in the southeast, so I can tell you know I can quickly tell you know what kind of resume you have there because a lot of times with films you know, there, there's a zillion films out there, a ton of which I could have never seen, never heard of. And so the film resume is not as important to me. And then I look to training uh, to see who okay. these, who the actors are working with and um, what type of uh, instructors they're, they're seeking out and, and working with. Um, um, for, the, for the training. So like me, I've been going to a studio since I moved here. And are you looking for people that are taking like work classes or just weekend stuff on top of classes? Um, just all the above. So, really it's you know who you're working with and then yes if you're taking workshops things like that it's just it just speaks to i think um work ethic a little bit because you know this is you never you never stop honing your craft as an actor it's something you've always got to work on it's a muscle you've always got to use um and so you know especially for young people anytime casting minors that's that's primarily what i'm looking at um, because I just think it, you know, kind of says something about how you're approaching what you want to do and, and how serious you're taking it. And if you're, you know, if you're constantly working with reputable people, um, it, it just looks better. And it makes me think that you're, you know, makes me, um, expect that you're going to turn in a quality product so that, you know, because if a casting director is good at what they do, they should be, we should all be pulling for you guys to do the best job possible because, without what you're doing, we can't do our job properly. Mm -hmm. And so it's all dependent on, that's why a lot of, you know, I try and give actors as much time as possible so they can prepare and, you know, put together a good tape so that when it all comes back to me, I can go through and I'm, you know, watching high quality material, but then that is going to translate into narrowing it down into, into the, the, the cream of the crop that they're going to be picking from. And so, yeah. um, yeah, again, I, <laughs> you'll notice I get off topic from time to time. Okay. So you may, have to re, you may have to rein me in here and there. No, it's very informative. I'm like listening. Um, so I was going to ask, it has to do with headshots as well. Have you ever had to like write off an actor for not either looking like their headshots or maybe being unprofessional or anything of that nature? Um, there are a couple of actors that, uh, that, I would not uh, put on a set that, that I know have been problematic in the past. Uh, and that's just from feedback that you get? Yeah, well, anytime, um, uh, anytime you get a call from a producer, it's most likely not gonna be a compliment. <laughs> so, I mean, and that's not, that, that's not always true. It's, you know, sometimes yeah. in this business, you do get complimented for do, doing a good job, but you know, yeah. it's, it's more of a business where you can do, uh, you got a hundred things to do, you do 99 of them very well. And so we're gonna talk about that one that you didn't do right. Um, but no, if I, if I hear, uh, if I get feedback um, that somebody's been difficult, then yeah, that uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. But that said, I've, you know, I've hired, you know, hundreds, probably thousands of actors over the years. And I'm telling you, it's, it's a very small number that I would not work with again. So yeah. it speaks to the, um, to the, prof the professionalism of the actors in the Southeast. Yeah, is, is and that you're doing your job well too. Well, and uh, you know, it's it's also I, to go back to self taping, and this is something I did not touch on before. But uh, actors in the southeast, because they've been doing it so long, they're pretty much ahead of the curve of both LA and New York because it's it's it was not as common prior to the last couple of years there. You know, because those casting directors they can get a breakdown, mm -hmm. uh, put it out, and they can put a session together the following day. I mean, sometimes if you get a breakdown out in LA in the morning, you can have actors in that afternoon. I, I can't do that because I've got, I'm relying on self tapes. And so, um, and actors in the Southeast have been used to that process. And so, you know, I'd say 80% of the time, tapes out of the Southeast look more professional than out of LA or New York. Now that said, a lot of times they get a pass, especially, an, you know, an actor with a lot of experience mm -hmm. can get away with shooting their audition in the hotel room, um, easier than an actor in the Southeast can, just yeah. because uh, it's just, you know, casting directors and actors in this area expect that it has to look, you know, uh, a certain quality. And, um, and so we just, we just can't, you know, we, I can't submit things that uh, I occasionally see LA and New York submit 
um, where, yeah, like it's, they're in a hotel or they're, you know, just circumstances are not ideal for a self tape. And so uh, yeah. there is that added benefit of being an actor in the Southeast. You're, you're ahead of the game and you're, okay. you're prepared for auditions post pandemic. Yeah. We're already doing it before the pandemic. So that's good. Exactly. Um, so from your knowledge, is anything starting back up? Are you casting right now for anything? No, um, you know, I was hoping that we would, well, originally, uh, originally we were only going to be down for, I think, we, we closed down Friday, March 13th. That night I got a notice that we were shutting down. And at the time it was for three weeks. Yeah. Um, it was pretty optimistic <laughs> um, in retrospect. Uh, but I was guessing we'd be back by June in the early parts of this. Um, now I'm thinking September, but it's just, you know, it, it, right now it's worse than it was three weeks ago. So uh, it's hard to say, you know, we'll see where it's at. I don't know what it was like in Atlanta over the 4th, but yeah. down here the beaches were packed and people were everywhere and no social distancing. Yeah, oh. so it's like, you know, if we keep doing the same things, we're going to see the same results. So I, I don't know, it's hard to predict. Yeah, I'm surprised. I don't think anybody does. Yeah, in Atlanta, everything's opening back up. Um, I don't think it's as bad as beaches, but there's a lot of auditions starting back up, of course, from the house. Oh, really? Um, so it's it's surprising, yeah. <laughs> so well, I think I mean, that, yeah. You know, I guess that's good. It's, you know, yeah. I don't know what, outside of commercials, I don't know what would be shooting them. Yeah. Maybe they're just preemptively doing it because they think we're going to open back up, but I don't, yeah. I don't see it happening yet. Um, other than that, I don't think I had any other questions. I wanted to tell everyone that is watching, casting directors are always on your side. They want you to do well. Um, most people that I talk to that are new in the industry are really scared of auditions and they don't keep in mind. <laughs> Yeah, well, and that's, you know, that's not uncommon. I mean, it's uh, even, um, I was on one of these Zooms with uh, the Army Wives cast a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago, a few weeks ago, um, or a couple months ago now. Uh, and, uh, you know, Sterling Brown, even somebody at that level that's had incredible success and been a series regular on a, you know, network show, you know, talks about how, you know, nervous and, you know, how are the, the nerves going into an audition and it's, you know, you got to find a way to harness that and make it, you know, useful rather than something that's fearful. And, you know, I say that not at all being able to do that myself. I'm, yeah. I'm not an actor. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how you guys do it, but uh, yeah. uh, it, it's, uh, I know, I know enough actors to know that that does not go away. I mean, even mm -hmm. um, years ago, I uh, produced a movie that Patty Duke was in and uh, she was telling me uh, in the lead up uh, in prep that, uh, you know, for her 60th birthday, she uh, let herself quit auditioning. Um, I mean, somebody that successful, an Academy yeah. Award winner, you know, and it, lifelong, you know, dealing with auditions and not liking it. But um, uh, yeah, you'd be better, better off if you, if you can find a way, you know, however that is to, to make, make, that, make that work for you rather than work against you. Yeah, um, I try to use mine the most I can. I At first, um, it was so bad that sometimes I would break out in hives on my neck. So I had to learn how to deal with that. And each person has yeah. their own way. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I appreciate yeah. your time today. You've, we're very of course. It's been Good, good. I hope, uh, I, hope, <laughs> I hope you've taken something away from it. But it's uh, been have. a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah, and other people will too. Thank you so much. Of course.